morning, everyone. My name is Allison Kennard. Uh, I am a general manager in, in charge of the learning experiences team within Microsoft. Uh, our goal in learning experiences is to build learning material, certification, and programs to ensure that people in the workforce and our customers can make the most use out of Microsoft technology as possible and be successful with Microsoft technology. That's really important to us. So that's what our team is responsible for. And I will tell you, I think this is an amazing, really, really interesting time we're facing right now. I've been at Microsoft for about 20 years. So I've been through a lot of change. Since 1993, there have been many, many changes in technology that technology has driven in the way that we live and the way that we work. But I think right now is possibly the most amazing time that I've seen so far in 20 years. There is so much going on, so many advances in technology. And that means lots of change to our lives for the better, lots of opportunity, but it also means challenges, right? It's challenging for companies and governments to find workers who are skilled. It's challenging for people to keep their skills up to date because technology is changing so fast and it's so pervasive in everything we do. So really, really interesting time, and that's what my discussion will be about today. It'll be, well, actually, I have an agenda. I'll talk a little bit about what we're seeing in terms of trends in technology, um, what, what challenges and opportunities that brings. I'll talk a little bit about skills and the gap that we see between the skills that are needed and the skills that we, we see in the marketplace and in the workforce. And then lastly, I'll, I'll weave in a little bit about what Microsoft is doing, what companies like Netcom are doing to accommodate trends that we see in learning. So learning is changing as a result of all this uh, access to technology. So that's sort of my discussion. I have slides built. I'll go through those probably in about a half an hour. And then I'll open it up to questions and comments. I'm really interested in, in your feedback and what you're seeing. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have along the way. Um, so we have a new uh, chief executive officer uh, at Microsoft. His name is Satya Nadella. And in one of the first all hands meetings he had with the Microsoft employees, he talked about his love of learning and introduced himself as a lifelong learner. So I thought I'd share that with you today. One of the things he believes fundamentally is that when you stop learning, you stop doing great and interesting things. So he's definitely weaving additional learning culture into the Microsoft uh, way that we work. Uh, we've always been sort of a culture at Microsoft of lifelong learning, but I think he's even going to drive that even further. And it's important, right? It's important to innovation. So let's face it, right? These are the, these are the key things that have been changing the way that we live and the way that we work in the past few years. It's about devices that everybody has. Everybody has one in their pocket right now, I know. You have not only your phone, but you have your tablet, you have your laptop, you may even have a desktop, multiple devices per person. All of those powered by services in the cloud. All new stuff in the last few years. Social, the way that we interact with people is through technology, is now social, right? The way we work, we work more socially through technology. And then lastly, that what we can learn through all of the data that's collected um, and how we personalize experiences for people is all new as well. And we do that through something we call big data. We really know our customers better. So all of these things causing opportunities as well as challenges. We'll talk more about that. So Microsoft, we see these shifts, right? These shifts and changes in technology. And we're changing our mission as a company as a result. So I think this is just an example of one company that says, hey, given all the changes in technology, we need to shift what we're doing as a business. So we changed our mission from a world where there's a PC on every desk and in every home running Microsoft software to now lighting up the magic of software through a mobile first, cloud first world. So shift in Microsoft, shift in many companies around the world. How many of you have heard of the Internet of Things? 
Okay, so this is really one of the latest trends in technology, and I thought I'd bring this up and talk a little bit more about it, because I think you're all familiar with the cloud and the devices and social media and those things. This is just the latest thing that's happening now, and it's really fascinating, and it'll change the way we work going forward, and we live, actually. And so things, there's really no better word for it, um, are those they are meters, they're cameras, they're uh, monitoring equipment, they're wearables. I've got a wearable on right now. It's a Fitbit. It, it tracks how many steps I take. Nothing too fancy, but these are getting fancier and fancier. It's all of those types of devices that are connected to the internet. They're collecting tons and tons of data. And then decisions can be made based on the data that they're collecting. So in your home, you may have a device that's monitoring the climate. And based on certain conditions, certain things will happen automatically. So your temperature, your thermostat will be turned down at certain temperatures. That can all happen automatically. <coughs> if you're wearing a, a medical device like this, the data can be collected and monitored and decisions can be made about your healthcare based on that data. So these, these things are real today. There are, there's an estimated 10 billion things connected to the web today, collecting data of various things. Water meters, parking meters, lots and lots and lots of metering going on. But what's interesting about that is that where today we believe it generates about almost two trillion dollars in revenue opportunity, these devices, that that's going to grow to seven trillion dollars in the next, uh, what is that, next six years. Seven trillion dollars in additional revenue through this technology alone. So companies are, are very excited to tap into these revenue opportunities. So Internet of Things is going to be a big deal. It already is. And it's going to be. It's going to change your life, and it's also going to change the way you work and what you need to know to get a job. And really what I'm trying to say is that all these advancements drive a device-enabled workforce. So this is a new thing that the expectation is that the workforce is enabled by technology. There's a ton of spending around cloud technologies, around applications. There's also a shift in the way people work, right? There's already a shift to anywhere, anytime information workers, right? People aren't expected all the time in their offices. But in order to be effective as anywhere, anytime workers, they need to have the skills to be effective. So cloud, devices, Internet of Things, you know, what is this doing to the job market? How is it affecting jobs? One thing we know is that it's creating a lot of jobs in the IT sector, specifically. So we've talked to companies. Uh, we've done some surveys. We see uh, many, many hiring managers ready to hire right now. Lots of jobs open, in fact, today. Um, we see 62 million new jobs by 2022. So in eight years, another 62 million jobs we expect to be open, and this is based on the uh, the Labor Department of the U.S. So, absolutely, there are jobs in the IT sector. But there's a workforce shortage in IT specifically. And there's a few reasons for that. First, bachelor's degrees. So the tech-related bachelor's degrees, we believe they pump out about 51,000 of those per year, but that there is 122,000 needs for those people with bachelor's degrees per year. That's one gap. And if you're looking for a diverse workforce, we're going to struggle with getting enough women as well because we see fewer and fewer women going into those tech fields um, in college. So that's a problem. And it's on a downward trend. The second thing is the difficulty attracting those people that do have the skills. So when you find someone who has the skills you need as a company to be able to attract them find them, attract them, and then pay them enough is very difficult because people that have the skills can demand high salaries, difficult to meet their salary requirements. 
And then the third area is really about companies investing in the training of their workforce. So keeping up the skills of their employees. Technology is changing fast, right? None of you even knew about the Internet of Things and it's really already here. And, and you're all educated, smart people, right? So technology is changing fast. So companies have to be able to keep up with those changes by investing in their workforce. So that's another problem that's keeping this gap um, real in the IT space. So really it comes down to skills. There are skills missing from the workforce. It's not just about degrees that aren't there because there's also vocational um, schools, there's technical schools, there's training, there's other ways that people can get those skills and they're not getting those skills today. So it's a skills gap issue. We looked at just a few of the top um, major technology companies and there's at least 10,000 openings today that can't be filled. So there are jobs and there are just missing skills in the market. One of the things we do at Microsoft, just to look at how this affects Microsoft, because of course I work at Microsoft, I'm, I care about this, is we do a monthly survey um, of job boards. We just go out onto the job boards of major cities around the world, the most popular ones, and we look for when a job posting requires or prefers a certain skill or certification, and when it says Microsoft, we tick the Microsoft box and we look also at our competitors, Google, Apple, and Cisco in this case, but we look at multiple. And we look at how many job postings there are in each city for those jobs. And what we find on the Microsoft side is that we are usually, in fact, in this case, always far, far, there are far, far more jobs requiring Microsoft skills than those of our competitors or cohorts in the, in the tech industry. So this is a really bad thing <laughs> for Microsoft. We need these jobs filled. We really want people with skills in Microsoft technology out there to fill these jobs. And if you look, we need more Microsoft skills than all of our competitors combined. So very, very important to Microsoft. And this is why we have companies like Netcom who help drive training into the market and get those skilled people ready to work. And you know, our products continually change. So the skills that people are looking for today aren't necessarily going to keep them employed for long, right? You've got to get your skills. You've got to stay, stay up to date. You've got to continuously learn. And one of the reasons our products, uh, the needs are so great in the market for our products is because we have some pretty impressive numbers out there on our products. If you look at Office, Office alone, one out of every seven people on the planet uses Office. This is a highly in-demand skill set. People that are certified in Office, it helps them get jobs more than any other technology, actually. It's the number one need around the world because it's needed for almost every kind of profession. It's not just technology jobs, right? Office contributes to success across all job functions. So Office is a big one. Skype, a third of the phone traffic now worldwide goes over Skype. Our partner network, we have 640,000 Microsoft partners. Those, pe those are the companies that are hiring. They're building their business around Microsoft technology. They're big hirers of people with Microsoft skills. Yammer, we have 7 million Yammer users in, in enterprises in, in most of the Fortune 500 now. Windows Azure, we are signing up a thousand customers per month, many of them in the Fortune 500 on Windows Azure, which is our platform as a service offering. Windows Server powers three quarters of all data center virtualized servers in the world. Three quarters of them. Windows Server, very important skill people need. So now we've talked a little bit about innovation, about the change in technology. How does this impact learners? Because I, as I said before, learners and their demands are changing. And also, you know, youth, right? As people grow up with technology, they come out of, into the workforce and they have a different expectation for learning. So some of the things we're seeing are the expectation that learning is online. They can get it anytime, anywhere. 
the expectation that there's a social element to learning, right? They don't, you don't just learn by yourself, you learn with your peers, because they've, they've been growing up in a social media world. And they interact well, and they collaborate well. And so there's an expectation that that's how they learn. They, they expect immediate gratification. So I have a question, I want to figure out the answer. They want to find that answer quickly. They don't necessarily want to sift through a book, right? They want to be able to search and find it. They also like um, gamification. If you, if you go out and do any kind of learning online, you'll see that there's often opportunities to earn points and then to, to put yourself on a leaderboard and potentially get ahead of your, of your cohorts uh, as you learn. And the, and the people, people are liking that, right? It's very motivating. So gamification is a key thing we're thinking about around learning. And then personalization, that's another one. I think if you shop online, you know how personalized shopping can actually enhance your experience uh, for online shopping. But the same is true for learning. Like, I'm having trouble getting through this exercise. Maybe my learning can change, my path can change a bit to help me get through this one exercise. And if I'm having an easy time on another exercise, then maybe my path skips me through a few things. So personalized learning is another, uh, another element we're thinking about in the learning process. We're also seeing some trends in how um, people are conducting training as well as what people are looking for in training. The biggest shift we're seeing at the top here is from the classroom training, the in, people going to classrooms like this and getting training for multiple days with a physical teacher. Uh, that is, is, is going down and it has been going down for a number of years. And what's replacing it are these other types of training modalities. And those really consist of mobile type training, training you can get on the phone, you can read while you're on the subway, on the bus, um, digital training, so e-books, um, using your e-reader to get training, video, so now that we have proliferation of broadband, it's very inexpensive to store, videos are very, very popular for learning. And then virtual instructor-led training is getting all the benefits of being in a classroom like this, but not having to go to the physical classroom. You have the instructor, but you interact with the instructor in an online way. So those types of modalities are sort of taking over the old classroom training. And when we talk to um, companies, we've been, we talked to some Fortune 500 companies about what they're doing around changing training for their employees. And they're, they're doing some pretty interesting things. Um, a lot of them are using mobile devices already to deliver some of their corporate training. They're also using social media and using Yammer, for example, to try and drive people to learn from each other. Um, they're using gamification. And then they're using these massive open online courses. So these are free courses with world-class professors from world-class universities primarily that are offered online. Um, so companies are taking advantage of these offerings and getting their people to take the classes which is great. It's inexpensive. It does, it, you know, they have to give them the time off, so there's an investment in the human, but it's not expensive to put the training on. So that's fantastic. Um, and I think those MOOCs, those are really shifting education in general. So I think I'd, if I were you, I'd pay attention to that, to that phenomenon, and see where that's going. One of the things the MOOCs are, are trying to do now is figure out how do they validate that the skills were obtained. So you sit through a class, that's good, but did you, there's no outcome, right? There's no outcome in that process. So they're trying to figure out, is, is there a way to do an assessment at the end to enable you to have some sort of a certification based on that training that you took? So those changes will be coming, but I think I'd keep an eye on the MOOCs going forward. And basically everything is going online. Training is definitely moving online. I talked to Russell before this meeting and he talked about his business is going to over almost 50% online training at this point. So very convenient and the, and the modality is quite nice. It's getting good with the technology and enables some good social experiences as well. Validation, so for us at Microsoft, we have a certification program. And certifications have long, for a long time been a way for someone to gain credibility 
about a skill that they have a, obtained. And they take a test, it's a proctored exam, um, it's a standardized test, and people are able to then take that certification and get a job that they wouldn't otherwise be able to get, potentially get a promotion that they wouldn't be able to get, make more money than they wouldn't be able to in the past. So certification has been around for a long time by the major uh, technology vendors, but it's going through shifts as well. So some of the things that we're looking at for certification and how would we evolve that <coughs> is around, first, cloud technology, right? Cloud technology is by its nature changing all the time. So how do we set a certification that takes months and months and months to prepare for when the software is changing on the back end while you're studying for your, for your test. So we have to think about ways to um, deliver tests that are not dependent on the rapid changes uh, in the cloud. So that's one, one piece that we're working on. That will, that will change the way we test people and get the skills verified. The next thing is new entrants to certification. Um, Again, the instant gratification thing. They want to take smaller sort of bite-sized uh, exams and assessments and have those build up to an ultimate certification. So we're looking at being able to enable that as well. And then lastly, just like the students of today don't like to go to the physical classroom, they'd rather take the class online from an instructor who's online. They also don't want to go to a physical testing center, which is what we've always required in the past to make sure that the person is who they say they are and they're the ones taking the test. We're finding new ways through technology to be able to proctor those exams online. So that's another thing we're doing so that people can take the test from the comfort of their home at any time of night. They can take the test from work or wherever it makes sense for, for them to take that test where they're most comfortable. So those are some of the trends in, in validation in the market and you'll see some of those things changing over time. And then when, it, when we looked at kind of what are the top areas of certification that people are seeking out right now, what we found is that security is the number one. There are a lot of people looking to get certified in security. Um, we also saw that the second area is cloud computing. If you combine the cloud computing with the virtualization piece here, which is all private and public cloud, that's a huge area for certification. And then another area that we see a lot of people jumping on board is around app development. So those are some key skills needed in the market. People are really seeking out um, certification and training in those areas. So how are Microsoft and Netcom Learning helping with this issue of a mismatch of the skills that exist in the market and the skills that the companies and governments need to really drive their businesses. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing in the learning experiences team. So as I said, our goal is to build the ecosystem. So the trained and skilled people out in our partner network as well as in our customers so that they're successful with Microsoft technology. That's what we want. So we want to get that training out there. And we want to make those people happy Microsoft um, proficient and enthusiastic Microsoft uh, technologists. So what we've done is we've designed training that goes across, training and validation that goes across from academic through the workforce and then with the validation piece to make sure that people have outcomes when they, when they take their training. We're really thinking about sort of a lifelong and continuous learning path because that's what the expectation is going forward. We built it on a modern learning experience platform so we're able to light up experiences that the new learner and the new certified person want from, an ex from a learning experience. Some of the things we talked about around gamification and um, immediate gratification, those types of things and personalization, we're bringing those into our platform. And then we have assets that we're building that provide a sort of depth experience with the student, with the employee, and then on the certification side. But we're also looking at how do we reach more people? How do we get more assets out to the individual who's trying to skill themselves up, potentially as part of a company or on their own. And so we've got you know, uh, online training in the Microsoft Virtual Academy. We have eBooks that are free often. We have assessments and badging we're working on that are much smaller bite-sized ways 
to verify your skills. So those are the, some of the things that Microsoft is doing. We build all these assets from Microsoft, but we don't do direct training ourselves. We reach out to individuals through online assets, but all of our sort of deep engagement goes through our partners like Netcom. And we have a 1,200 partners like Netcom, not quite like Netcom. <laughs> Netcom is one of our strong partners in the US, but worldwide we have a number of those partners who do all sorts of innovative training for people who are seeking to grow their skills and to take advantage of some of those great jobs out there. But we need more. We need more technology degrees. We know that we're trying to advocate for as Microsoft. Uh, we need more technology curriculum in the younger ages because technology skills are acquired quite young these days. So we're working on trying to drive curriculum lower and lower into elementary schools. We need more lifelong learners. I think that's something that people this day and age uh, have to recognize to stay up to date, continuously learn. And then we need to also think about recruiting. This is another area where I think we've recruited, companies have recruited the same way for 20 years, looked for the same sorts of skills and certifications, and they need to start thinking about how do we look for aptitude? Or how do we look at things differently? Like somebody learned this skill, therefore they may have an aptitude to learn this skill additionally and give those people a chance and bring them in and invest in their training. They're going to have to get more creative because there are people out there without jobs and there are jobs and there's a mismatch there. So we've got to get creative on recruiting. So I think there's going to be some work done there as well from, from our company. So that's all I prepared to talk about today. Um, I was thinking maybe if you guys had any questions or comments, I'd love to take those and maybe Russell can, can help as well.